come out of the back door to our classroom. This is the area with uh, more or less the affordable materials. Although it's getting wild <laughs> again. I mean, these men pruned at least three times already this year, and I gotta go do it again. And as we go this way, things that want a little more sun, but not afternoon sun. So. Okay, taking a look in this section. You could see a void. Oh, what happened was, uh, actually, I didn't sell it. Sometimes you know, when it gets sold, I have an empty spot. But this is the, where I had the privet and I cut it back severely. Then it was gonna get really hot, so I had to, uh, put it in deeper shade than it normally would get. So that's why there's an empty spot there. Okay, occasionally you see these really wild ones. Well, I was saving this so that I could do a chapter on pruning, right? This is a Korean hornbeam that uh, I was, I've been wanting to do this for over a month, so it's getting a little bit long, but that's what I was doing. I was saving it to make a chapter. Kind of the same excuse for this juniper. It needs to be thinned out. And you could see that a lot of work is still needed. Here's one of Mike's trees. And behind it is now the famous peacock boxwoods. Okay, then I swing around. This area is so so caught up. There's another one of Mike's. A couple of brood over rock. The one on the right, it's only my second year that um, got this far. So this was from a root cutting. And well, what I've been doing is I used a root cutting method and fertilizing heavily so that it has a chance to grow and keep pruning. That way you get to a nice finished product a much faster. A lot of the Chinese elms here. That's Mike's. And we're looking at Uncle Takas. You know, the other day I went to the cemetery to um, pay respects. I found that he's been gone 40 years. It didn't seem like it was that long ago. But anyway, yeah, I was looking at the grave marker and it was been 40 years. Okay, this area is gated to keep people out. Remember uh, liquid amber that we did a split? It's here. And it needs to stay where it doesn't get disturbed. The roots are still trying to recover. So if I move those or if I leave it where the people could get at it, uh, they could bump it or move it and damage the root. Um, these are definitely in need of pruning, but I'm not sure I want to bring it to my studio. I could damage the root uh, in the process. So, well, why don't you look at this and just call it before shot. And then I'm going to go in here and start 
lightly pruning so that we kind of guide this into a uh, finished bonsai in the future. A full sun area, a mixture of elms and olives, zelkobas, usually in larger containers because the plant itself could take it, but if it's in a small bonsai container, it dries out too fast. So this area is, um, well, near bonsai stages. Uh, most of them have great shapes. It's a little bit overgrown, which is very typical of being here. And then along here are nicely shaped olives. Okay, we are in the pine section. This is what you'll see when you drive up my driveway. So I think most of these we've seen before. Okay, now. As you look over here, I think you'll probably notice that some in the front are looking better than some in the back. What happened was, well, I always have good intentions of pruning, right? So I got busy and started pruning. The, so the front row got done. And then if you look behind it, I haven't got to it yet. So we, remember we were talking about removing the long center candle and breaking off the secondary. Well, the front row got done more or less that way, but not the second row. So, always sort of behind schedule all the time. That's a good looking boulevard cypress, isn't it? So, let's take a look at my overgrown stock here. Thank you for hanging out with me. So this is Hero saying goodbye. I'll see you again real soon in another chapter. So this has been my nursery tour for the start of summer. So we'll see you again on a tour probably as the fall starts.